Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvide, and I've heard that there is an update to the My Dear Hatchet Man game. <laughs> so that means we get to see Alan again. I'm not gonna beat around the bush, I'm just gonna go for it. Warning, the contents within this game includes violence, sexual activities, and manipulation. Those under 18 years of age are prohibited from playing this game. The creator and all who associate it Nuts. I wanted to read that. Be aware that there will be adult themes in this game, and it is not meant for minors. Okay? Okay, so this, this looks like this is the start of day two, so... I open my eyes, but I can't see anything. I try to feel around, but nothing appears to be in front of me. In my ear! Fingers start tightening around my throat. Hey. I started to claw desperately. My lungs feel like they're about to collapse. Ah. Holy patootie. What a way to start the morning. Check messages. For F's sakes. It isn't even a person that woke me up. Instead, it was some gosh darn emergency alert. Something about another missing person. Missing person, you say? Seems like it's out of my control. My head was pounding, and I felt incredibly drained. I should probably drink some water. The time reminded me that I only got a measly three hours of sleep last night. A half-empty bottle of sleeping meds on its side. Ooh. I cannot survive if I have less than, like, six hours. I did not want to get up. I feel your pain, me. I feel your pain. I wanted to see Alan, though. Me too. I wonder what he was gonna plan today. He had a knack for keeping me on my toes and surprising me. He makes me feel warmth every time I think about him. He was kind of strange, but it was charming in a way. Well, if I was ever going to see him, I might as well get ready. Despite the rough morning, I didn't feel quite as tired as I did before. It could be because I was pretty much looking forward to meeting up with the local cryptic man I met just two days ago. Oh. It was certainly worth getting lost in the woods just to hang out with Alan. Is there gotta be a better way to contact this guy? Like, does he have a cell phone? Does he have, like, a bat signal? Much better than wasting my time being cooped up inside my home. Water bottles and dirty laundry taking up the space. Here comes the boy! Alan! Right on cue, I see Alan from the distance, waiting for me, I presume. He appeared to be playing around with his hatchet before noticing my presence. Mm. He cutely waved at me with the biggest grin on his face. Oh, look at him! Did he always have sharp molars? Espoir, you made it. Hey, Alan. Sorry if I was late. Did we plan... did we plan this? Not really. You're right on time, actually. Really? Huh. I figured, because of my lack of sleep, I would have arrived later than expected. Alan rested his hands on his knees, trying to get at my eye level. He was really close. I was really tall. He's just, like, leaning down on you. How you doing there, little fella? Be quiet. Be quiet, you tall person. How's the weather up there? I can't mess your hair because cause I can't reach it. Ready for what I have planned for the day? For today? For today? Planned? Oh boy. He flashed me a hopeful smile. How could I say no to his excitement? Aww. Yeah, let's... Before I could answer, my phone went off. <laughs> his expression. Oh, sorry. It feels rude to answer a phone call while Alan is around, waiting for me to answer. But what if the call was something important? Erica. Oh yeah, Erica. Hey. Hey, what's up? Aw, oh, he looks a bit sour. Mm. Immediately after speaking, I looked over to Alan, who seemed to have an annoyed expression on his face. Sorry if I'm bothering you at the moment. I know it's the end of the week, and trust me, I want nothing more than to shun the rest of the world as well, but... But? I want you to meet me at the park, is that okay? 
I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the middle of something here. I've kind of got a bit of a date, Erica. Uh, I don't see why not. Erica might have needed something from me. It wouldn't be cool to leave her like that. Sure thing, can I bring a friend over? Oh, My eyes hovered over to Alan. His annoyed face now brightened when I mentioned him. Although, once I took my eyes off him, I could have sworn that his smile dropped once again. As long as you get your hermit butt over here, I don't see the harm. Yes, hermit. Accurate. Don't be late or I'll end up ditching you. Madam, I'm taking time out of my forest date for you. You will not ditch me. I couldn't tell if she was joking or not. She has a strange sense of humor that sometimes flew over my head. We both hung up and I looked back at Alan. His displeased face was replaced with a curious one. Whoa. He appeared to be looking at my phone. Guess I have been gone for a while. What, my phone? You've never seen a phone before? Oh no, not that. I do have a phone, but... Alan proceeds to reach in his back pocket, pulling something out. It was a phone. An old flip phone. I haven't seen these bricks for what seemed like forever. Hey, they worked. They, they got me through the early 2000s. Mine isn't as cool as yours. He smiled bashfully before putting his phone away. Wow, you need to get caught up with the current times, Alan. Our phones do much more stuff now. Oh. That's incredible. We both started to walk to the park as I showed him all the apps I had. Being in the woods, there wasn't any steady signal, so showing him any type of social media was thrown out the window. Nevertheless, he was still impressed as I bombarded him with this new information. If what he said was true, then he must have been off of society for a long time. A really long time. Why was he in the woods? What happened to him? I didn't realize that huge scar on his arm. Were those stitches? I noticed them. Oh god, Alan, what happened to you? Just gesturing to his arm. I wonder why Erica wanted me to come. We didn't have to study or do anything class-related, which is what she usually calls me for. She told me that she doesn't usually date classmates or hang out with them outside of class because, well... Too many guys thought they had a chance of borrowing my bras and were disappointed after I had the gall to reject them. <laughs> who in there? Who in the world? Like, hey, can I borrow your bra? Like, really? Who, who does that? Hopefully no one. Hopefully no one does that. Yikes. Probably why she decided to approach me rather than any of the male classmates. Espoir. A voice I didn't recognize called my name. <laughs> Alan puts on a displeased look, his eyes watching the other side of the park. I could see two people, one I could immediately recognize as Erica. The other person, however, I've never seen him before. How did he know my name? Pretty. Aww. Oh my god, Espoir. Uh, hi. Aww. This guy was sure eccentric. I like Erica's hair. It's pretty. From the tone of my voice, he could tell I was confused. Do you not remember me? He sounded kind of disappointed. Yeah, sure, I remember you. I've known you for, you know, that indeterminate uh, in amount of time. I, I didn't forget you. I, I, have, I didn't forget you. I totally forgot you. Who are you again? <laughs> Jeez, dude, now you're making me feel bad. I gave him a good long look, the hamster wheels in my head beginning to move. Actually, Stu? <laughs> Cute. The guy gave me a smile and a wink. Right on. Stu, I think you might get hatcheted, my friend. I think you're gonna get hatcheted. Oh my god, it was him. It's Stu! <laughs> I could see the life nearly draining out of my eyes. I could barely hold... <laughs> I could barely hold my excitement in. Stu was a good friend of mine back since we were kids. 
Even before the two of us attended school together, we knew each other. Ah, he is the childhood friend trope. It was when I left for college we kind of lost touch. Why couldn't you just greet me yourself, you bozo? I wanted to surprise you. What a guy. He always had something up his sleeve. He's, he's gonna have a hatchet in the back of his head pretty soon. <laughs> he seemed just as pleased as I was, and I didn't think I would have missed him so much. Oh, I totally forgot. I'd been caught up with Stu and Erica. I seem to have just left Alan out of the conversation. Oh, he's making that face. However, by the look of his face, it didn't appear that he wanted to be any part of this. I kind of felt bad. This is Alan! Look at him. Isn't he cute? Hey. His tone was very... uninterested. The three remained silent after Alan greeted himself. <laughs> Erica had this look in her eye. <laughs> Jeez, Erica. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but she appeared to be deep in thought. You're probably looking at his arm just like I was, like, what, are you, are you okay, fam? Do you need help with that? Please, somebody break this silence. Stu, Stu, do something wacky. I kind of want to stay quiet, but I also kind of want to say something. Um... Hey. Great. Looks like it's up to me. So wait. All three of them looked at me once I spoke up. How did you and Erica even know each other? Stu remained silent, but Erica spoke up for him. Oh, he approached me after seeing me talking to you after class, saying that he knew you. I was a bit stunned. Did Stu go to the same college as me and Erica did? <laughs> oh, Alan, that's a bit questionable. It was a little startling, since he has only said one word in the entire conversation. Erica only eyes him, while Stu seems to become stiff. <laughs> Things seem to have gotten a bit out of hand now. Why didn't you just approach Espo in the first place? That's true. Why didn't he? Stu was always the type to make the first move when greeting someone. Hey, now, it's a little rude to intrude on someone when you've first met, don't you think, big guy? Oh, yeah, you're getting hatched. You are, ooh, you are gonna get hatched, Stu. I'm sorry. You are gonna become very friendly with a, with a small axe. You're avoiding the question. Th the two were now staring each other down. Me and Erica looked at each other as if we both read each other's minds. Plagued with worry. They're, they're gonna they're gonna kill each other. They're just gonna be at each other's throats on the ground, and then they're gonna start making out. What? Surprisingly, Erica stepped in. Thank God. If you really wanna know, he approached me first because he was asking for my number. <laughs> that makes more sense. Oh, I see. What? Espoir? No, I get it. I'll see you around then, Stu. <laughs> Look at Alan's face. <laughs> Alan's like, yeah, jackpot. Yeah. It was at this point Alan took hold of me with a satisfied look on his face. <laughs> Without a word, he took me away from the park. He wrapped his arms around me protectively. Aww. I can't explain why, but him being so close to me like this brought me comfort. He gave me a comforting smile, which I also returned. But no, Espoir, wait! I looked back, seeing Erica running up to me, Stu right behind her. I do feel bad for leaving them behind at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Alan looked at me, shaking his head disapprovingly, as if telling me that talking to them wasn't worth it. Let me explain myself, please. All right, what you got? I couldn't leave him like this. He was my friend. My first ever friend. All right, Stu. Go ahead. <laughs> he side-eyed, looking to the ground and fiddling with the pockets of his pants. 
L listen, Erica worded it weird. I know that back then I wasn't well. What I mean is that please don't perceive me in that type of way. Well, how would you, which way would you like me to perceive you, Stu? I really just wanted to see you. I've heard enough, Stu. I gave him a reassuring smile. Remembering Stu back then, he was kind of a flirt with everyone. It shouldn't surprise me that he tried to get with Erica. I don't know if I got upset at Stu for still getting into his old ways, or that I got upset that he was flirting with Erica. Upset at Stu's antics, upset he tried to get with Erica, you don't know why. I don't know why. Hmm. Well, I mean, that is kind of annoying, but I, I don't know. And I don't care. I just want to get this feeling off my chest. I breathe it out, still smiling at the two. I know you're trying your best. I am. He said it so seriously, but yet with so much sincerity. And with that, I left with Alan. <laughs> Is this our house or his house? I tried to relax, tried to distract myself. I was bundled into a ball at the end of my couch, Alan sitting on the other side. Whoever's on that TV looks a little familiar. But it could just be my imagination. The living room was dark, with only the light of the TV giving any life. My attention wasn't on the TV, however. It was towards Alan. His eyes stayed glued to the screen before he shifted them in my direction. This is the second time I've been caught staring at him. I averted my gaze immediately. I must have been weird to him. You okay? I'm sorry. Are you still upset about what happened? Not really. Just, that guy was kind of being a little dweeb. Spitting on my mic. I didn't really want to answer, but my silence was deafening. I'm being stupid. Sorry. I don't know why I got so upset. I couldn't control it. It was like somebody at, at a, the computer was controlling me with a mouse and keyboard. I could see him softening his face at the corner of my eye. I didn't know why I started rambling to him, but I did. I suddenly felt a weight on top of me. I was being pushed down onto my back. Oh no. Alan had pinned me, his hands gently wrapping around my wrists. And he's taller than me, and his hands are like big old man hands, so that's probably, it's probably pretty, pretty nice. Espoir. You know you can tell me anything. Alan. My heart started to pound, and I felt him starting to come closer to my face. I went stiff. Oh, we gonna kiss. We gonna smooch. We're going to smooch town. Get, get your keys, put your shoes on. We're going to smooch town, USA. Smooch. I pressed my lips against his. He seemed to be taken by surprise, but leaned into our kiss. It was deep and passionate. Alan then pressed up against me, and I could immediately feel his... Editor me? Editor me? I think you might have to censor some things. I, however, will enjoy this, but you... You're gonna have to censor some stuff. If it... if it gets that steamy. Wink. Excitement. I really like you, doe eyes. I shivered. Ooh. His breath tickled the lobe of my ear. You have no idea how you make me feel. Every time I look at you, my heart swells. It's like I want to hold you and never let you go. Ever. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. His choice of words made me feel something. Although it sounded a tad possessive, he 
It made me feel wanted and cared for. His hands start trailing from my wrists, making their way all over my body. Proceed. Alan peppered kisses from my jaw to my collar. Everything about you is perfect. I want to treasure you. You're the only good person in my life. Hey, this is slowly turning into one of those uh, Yandere boyfriend ASMR videos, except it's done by a girl who can barely do a boy's voice. Ha <laughs> ha! How could he even speak like this with no sweat? Just hearing those words made me look away in embarrassment. I suddenly feel his hands take hold of my face, pulling me towards his direction. Look at me, doe eyes. I want to see a reaction. Then I felt something sharp. Are you biting me? No bite. No bite. No bite. I didn't get an answer, but I could feel the curling of a smirk forming against my inner thigh. The only response was another bite, sinking his teeth deeper. Owie! Quit it! He was trying to mark me multiple times. Aw, cute. Yeah, just, just don't mark me any other way. You know, with, you know, just don't, don't mark me any other way. I'm, that's not cool. Please don't do that. He got rid of his turtleneck, tossing it off to the side. Mize couldn't help but to wander to admire his bare chest. That is, until... Holy bedoodles! I saw a scar. A huge scar. Ooh. In fact, his whole body was covered in injuries. He was in way worse shape than I expected. More scratches, cigar burns, and, again, the scar at the side of his abdomen. Ooh, 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 that looks painful. Cigar burns, uh. It didn't look fresh, but still, how long has he had these before? Alan, what happened to you? Are you good, fam? Do you need a hospital? You need some cream? Oh, these. He looked away from my gaze, brushing one of his scars. Some of these are from childhood. Others are more recent. Who hurt you, fam? Who was it? Who hurt you? They're going to get hatcheted by me. Who hurt the boy? Even though it could have been like someone that he was in the process of hatcheting. <laughs> Do you like that I use hatcheting as a verb? <laughs> we both stood silent, with my concern still weighing down. Don't worry about it. Alan, these are clearly not simple scratch marks. Are you hurt? Are you good, fam? It's okay, Doe Eyes. I swear. They didn't even hurt. Mm. What? What is he going on about? I'll... I'll explain later. Just please. Let's keep going. I want you right now. Oh. I shouldn't push it if he doesn't want to talk about it. Okay. It's okay, Doe Eyes. You can relax with me. I'm gonna have to censor all of this. I can't believe I get to keep you like this. You're all mine. 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 I was his. All his. He was rough, and I could see him baring his teeth, almost animalistic. The doe eyes. I... I love you. My hand drifted up to his brown hair, and I slowly began to stroke it. Oh. We must have stayed for a good few minutes, holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan robbing the convenience store again? Alan got up from my chest, rolling his eyes. I'll leave that for another day, but no, I think you'll like this much better. He took my hand and guided me back to the woods. 
It was a bit of a walk, like most of our little get-togethers, but for some reason it felt longer than before. Gradually, the trees became sparse and patches of the night sky peeked through the branches. We were going uphill, having a bit of a hike on our way there. He seemed to have noticed that I was getting fatigued. If you want, I can carry you. It's no bother. I... I carry. I... I be carried. It seemed a little silly, but I wouldn't mind. I raised my arms up, mentioning him... Nah, motioning him to pick me up. He smiled at me, and just as quickly lifted my body, carrying me bridal style. I figured he did, that'd be pretty easy for him. You're incredibly cute. No, I'm not. Mm. Shut up. See? Oh. We both lay down on the soft grass. The sky was completely bare of any clouds, and the darkness of the woods made the tiniest dots of the stars twinkle brighter. Oh yeah, if you get away from the city, the stars look incredible. It was so nice and cool out here. Oh, it kind of reflects in his eyes, too. Aw, beautiful. I looked over to Alan, eyes glowing with awe. It made me smile, seeing him like a kid in a candy store. What's your favorite? Hmm? Constellation, I mean. What's your favorite constellation? I like the crab. I like the 69 cancer crab. My favorite constellation is my zodiac one. Really? Which one? Holy cow. Oh, I can I can actually choose. I am the crab. That's cool. Yeah? Which one is your favorite? Orion. The hunter one? Oh yeah, hunter. Why is that? The story behind it, it's cool. And I share the same last name. Oh. Alan Orion? That's your full name? Aw, oh, cute. Alan simply gave me a nod, sighing peacefully, taking in the fresh air around us. I bet that- I bet that's lovely. I bet that's absolutely lovely. You sure know a lot about constellations, huh? Yeah, ever since I was a kid. That was probably the first personal thing I knew about him. My eyes went from looking at the stars to the stitched scar on his arm. Alan? Hmm? About those scars... No. Oh, oh. I see his smile drop, and I immediately feel bad for bringing it up. I I'm sorry. I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but... It's okay. You're just worried about me, right? I give him a nod laying on my side, looking over to him. I gave him a few moments for him to collect his thoughts. He finally spoke up. Well, to start off, most of these scars are recent, only due to me and my recklessness. Like? <laughs> like trying to feed a bear? Well, you do live in a forest. I guess you do gotta try to feed a bear. Alan. I know, I know. It was dumb. Extremely dumb. I lightly punched his arm, as if it was some sort of punishment for putting himself in danger like that. He only retaliated with a soft chuckle. His smile faded, however. Not all of them are new, though. He shifted uncomfortably. I gave him another moment. I was kind of a troubled kid. Got bullied a lot, and, well, I got pretty tired of it that I got physical. So those cigarette burns were from your bullies? No, they were from my older brother. What? You have a brother? He did that to you? I have three, actually. Ooh. This was spinning my entire world. Alan must have been through a lot. Is that why he's in the woods? To escape from it all? We were pretty dysfunctional. Mom was constantly in and out of a hospital, so two of my older brothers had to take care of us. The eldest, he burnt cigarettes on me whenever I would win in a fight, telling me I finally became what I was meant to do. 
It was to fight back and not let others push me. I'd hate to say it worked. What about your other brothers? Second eldest wanted to pretend that everything was fine and ignored our problems. He was desperately trying to be like the dad of our group when I didn't need one. I wanted a brother. He heavily sighed after his rant. I kept myself quiet to let him continue. My youngest brother, I got along with him at first, but he wasn't the worst out of all of them, but we had a fallout. I'm sorry. It's all right. They were nothing compared to my school life. I got called crazy-eyed Alan by my entire class. Aw, oh, but his eyes are cute. I only gave him a sad expression, feeling incredibly sorry for him. I scooted closer to him, practically touching his shoulders. I can't imagine how long you must have endured it. One instant in particular pushed me over the edge. That day I decided to drop out of school, leave my family, and never look back. We both stayed silent, continuing to look up at the night sky. I always thought I was meant to be alone. I didn't like being around people. I started to feel his hand brush against mine. That was until I met you, Doe Eyes. Aww. He took a hold of my hand, squeezing it tightly. It made my heart race. Aww. Alan. Hmm? I look over to him, meeting his eyes, giving me the softest expression of I've ever seen from him. I think your eyes are beautiful. I do. I think you have very beautiful eyes. A smile slowly creeped onto him, and I could see his face reddening. Thank you. I think I should go back home now. All right, then. We both got up from our spot. I stretched out my arms, feeling a yawn coming on. Alan noted, standing beside me. Let me carry you. It's fine, Helen. I'm just a little tired. Before I could get on my feet, I felt his arms hook around my legs and back, and proceeded to pick me up from the ground at ease. Hey! He gave me a smile, holding me closer to his body. I insist. I gave in, pouting on the way there before my eyes began to grow heavy. I leaned onto his chest, making him my personal pillow and rested my eyes. No, I could barely tell what was going on around me, only feeling my body being set down on something soft and comfortable. I smiled, cuddling up to something soft I could find next to me. Before I drifted off to sleep, something warm pressed against my cheek, and I heard Alan's voice. Good night, Doe Eyes. Oh, oh so wholesome. Oh, so sweet. Oh, I, I'm going to have to cut out and censor a teeny bit of that. You know, don't want YouTube throwing a javelin at me or something. But uh, I'm curious as to what would happen if I chose a few different things. So let's, let's see that. Okay, so on this part, I will stay quiet and see what happens. Holy crap, this is so not going as planned. The uncomfortable air was beginning to be too much for me. I heaved out a shaky breath, then another, and another. <laughs> it was at this point Alan took a hold of me with a stern look on his face. No, oh, without a word, he took me away from the park. That's, that's good, actually. You could see, like, hey, you're probably having a panic attack or something, and I'm gonna get you out of here. He wrapped his arms around me protectively. He gave me a comforting smile, which I also returned. And then these two bozos show up. Alright, this looks pretty much the same. Tell them. Uh, bye y'all! Wait, what was, what was I doing? Alright, yeah, ignore them. Bye y'all! I broke eye contact with them, Alan's grip getting tighter around my shoulders as we continued to walk back. Where? I'm not sure. I just wanted to leave. I'm just going to hold him right now. See what happens. Boop. I'm not sure if I want to continue whatever this was, 
but I know that I don't want to let him go. Even if it was just for a bit. My hand reaches out towards his face, my thumb rubbing across his cheek. I could feel the rough patch of his scar. He leaned into my touch, pressing his lips at the palm of my hand. Oh, that's a baller move. That's a baller move right there. That's, that's a smoothie. That's a smooth move. He seemed to get the idea that I didn't want to go any further. He briefly smiled at me, only pulling me closer to his body and wrapping his arms around my waist. My hand drifted up to his brown hair, and I slowly began to stroke it. We must have stayed for a good few minutes, holding each other. Hey, I got an idea. Do you plan on robbing the convenience store again? All right, so, okay. So if you don't kiss him, it just skips that whole scene. Clever. Very clever. Uh, I'm fine. You don't have to carry me. I'm good. You don't need to do anything. I would simply feel bad for making him carry me all the way up. You're incredibly cute. Shut up. I like how you don't really get too much of a different uh, pathway, but you do get like one that's slightly different. So I think, yeah, this is pretty much the same. Pegasus. You know what? I don't know. I never really thought about zodiac signs. I'm not well known with my constellations. I can teach you if you would like. I almost know them like the back of my hand. D d d gosh darn it. The, the boy is growing on me. I'm falling in love with him. Oh no. He's, he's so cute. Alright, this seems pretty much the same as well. I'm glad to have... Or what, if, what happens if I don't say anything? If I just enjoy the moment. I couldn't bring myself to say anything. I felt choked up by my words. I think I should go back home now. All right then. Yeah, it's not it doesn't deviate too much. So no matter which thing you choose, you still you still get the story that's intended. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. That was day 2 of My Dear Hatchet Man. Alan is really starting to grow on me. I I kind of like that he's not super psychoness as some other boys that I happen to know. Not just the one, but several others. But uh, feel free to add this game to your collection and so you could get updates and for the next day. This has been one of my most recommended games, so definitely I will uh, let me know if it updates again because I thought I was going to get the message, but no. <laughs> You guys told me it updated faster than, than my emails did, so thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. I'm very tired. I made the mistake of recording this very late at night when I should not have. But have a great night yourself. Take care of yourself. And remember, there's always hope. I need to go to bed. I need to go to sleep. But I'm probably going to play more games. <laughs> Ooh.